Hi guys, before we get into this week's video, first a very important word of warning. There are scammers down in the comments and it usually goes in the way that you make a comment on my video and then they reply to you with my name and my profile picture and somehow ask you to contact them via WhatsApp or some other way. The only way you can verify whether it is actually me responding to you is if the name of the profile commenting on your comments is gray. There's a here, you can see how it is here. I will never, ever, ever ask you to contact me. I do not run giveaways and I do not run competitions on this channel. So it's all a scam. You can flag it for YouTube, send it in as spam, and then hopefully YouTube will get enough information so that they can imp implement some kind of YouTube AI algorithm so they can remove all these spam comments. But just a word of warning, do not fall for these scams. I have nothing to do with it and I can do nothing about it. So yeah, let's get into this week's video. So one of my biggest photographic missions for the past years while I've been photographing in my home country, Denmark, has been to try to capture the essence of the Danish summer. I absolutely love summer. It's my favorite time of the year. It's warm, it's cozy for the most part if it's not rainy and windy, as it can also be in Denmark. <laughs> but for the most part, it's really, really nice. And how do you actually capture the essence of summer? Well, I have come to a field full of dandelions. It's my favorite flower because for me, it symbolizes summer, summer holiday, summer vacation from school, freedom. <laughs> and I really love that color balance, if you want to say that, or mix between the yellows, the greens and a blue sky. So I'm basically almost in the middle of the day here to get the neutral color from the sun so I can get the true color of the flowers and the grass and the sky behind me. So how do I go about and photographing this? There's a few different ways. Right now I have just put on the wide angle lens, angled it a little bit down, found a, a good collection of dandelions and then I'm simply just making one of those with the very strong foreground that shows the flowers and then leads up to the background, background sky and then I have myself up there standing looking out over this field of flowers. So yeah hopefully that will turn out really really well. For me this is just like the essence of summer in Denmark and when I really started appreciating photographing during summer like everything changed for me. Uh, it's a completely other way of thinking photography when you compare to going to like epic Iceland or the epic Faroe Islands and photographing in crazy stormy weather. This here is something completely else and it gives off a completely other vibe in the final photo. So just like last year, I'm basically just driving around in the Danish countryside, trying to find interesting scenes, interesting motives. Right now I've come by this beautiful, beautiful field of rapeseed. This year I'm going to photograph so many rapeseed fields. But it's just about finding the right angle, as I talked about in last week's video. Get a little bit down and compress the scene. Personally, I go with a low aperture, so I have the flowers a little bit 
out of focus, but besides that, it's just about shoot, shoot, shoot. Over the past years I've enjoyed making small collections of photos that go well together. Last year I got these other two photos and as you will see by the end of this video I get a fourth I think fits well in with these three. So I think one of the big things when it comes to summer photography and also especially like daylight photography, it's like midday right now, is just to keep it simple. So I found another field here and right now I'm just shooting this little area here with the long lens, zooming all the way in. As you can see here is my composition. I'm putting on the polarizing filter. It makes the sky a bit more blue and it cuts off some of the light here on the grass. And then I'm just slowly focus stacking it all the way through because shooting at 400 millimeter I have a very, very narrow depth of field. I have absolutely no clue if it's going to work because in all honesty, when it's so windy, chances are it's probably not going to work at, at all. <laughs> but at the very least, I make sure that I get different focus points all the way throughout the photo. And that way I can put it together in Photoshop uh, in the way that I find to be the most optimal. So if you want to learn more about Photoshop and how to use Photoshop as a landscape photographer, be sure to get my huge course. I have a coupon code down in the description so you can save a little bit of money. In this course, I cover all the techniques, all the tips, all the different ways I use Photoshop to get my both minimalist but also epic photos from Iceland, the Faroe Islands and all sorts of different places. So be sure to use the coupon code and check it out down in the description. So admittedly the focus tagging part just didn't work in this case due to too much wind. But I knew in the field that if it didn't work, I'd give a smaller aperture a chance and just live with the increased amount of diffraction. To get most of the scene in focus at 400mm, f22 worked out well. On the 100-400mm at 400mm, f22 isn't too bad as it actually closes all the way down to f40. My biggest issue actually didn't turn out to be aperture, nor the increased noise, which I could just remove with the Topaz Labs denoise. I have a link and a coupon code for that one as well in the description. No. My biggest issue was actually hot air pockets, which distorts the light and makes the scene a bit wobbly. Hot air pockets are basically unavoidable on hot and dry days like these, but their effect is stronger at the longer focal length than the short. So I moved a little bit further along the field, and right now I'm just shooting into the field and using the tractor tracks. That is basically my subject in this sea of yellow. And then I, of course, have the blue sky with a little bit of clouds there in the background. Not a whole lot. But yeah, it, again, super, super simple. I've actually decided to try out to go all the way to f22. Even f32, this lens goes all the way up to f40 when I'm all the way out at uh, 400 millimeter. But it means that I have to really up the ISO to get a shutter speed with, where I kind of even catches uh, the rapeseed because it's flowering around in the wind. This is, this is the limits of my English. <laughs> um, but yeah, so really it's, it's super simple. Straight on with the tractor tracks. F22, ISO 640 and a shutter speed of 1 160th. Straight on and then I'm using the polarizer to just darken down the sky a little bit.
As you can see, I went with the horizontal version of the scene instead of the vertical. I was also lucky that different birds flew through the scene, which I could capture separately and time blend into the photo with a simple darkened blending mode in Photoshop. As I was shooting at 162mm for this photo, the hot air pockets weren't as bad in this photo as in the previous. A little later in the day, I came by a similar scene with an even longer tractor track, which I also got a photo of. Here follows a small sequence with video and photos from my drone I've captured of the many beautiful yellow fields. There is hardly anything more Danish, at least how I see it, as windmills, rapeseed fields in May, and a blue sky with some puffy clouds. And that is exactly what I have right here. So look at this scene, very, very beautiful. In this specific location, I would say a polarizing filter makes a massive difference. So I put it on, and as you can see in this video here, where I turn the polarizing filter, you can see how big of a difference it actually makes. I would say that the only downside to this specific photo, to this specific scene, is that the windmills are turned the wrong way. I'm technically photographing them from the perceived backside, and I would have preferred to do it from the front of them, but the wind is as it is, and there are no rapeseed fields on the other side. So yeah, <laughs> this is the photo I'm going to get today, but what a marvelous, simple, beautiful scene. And yeah, it does look quite a lot like the Ukrainian flag. I'm pretty sure that whether you're Danish or Swedish, Ukrainian or wherever you're from, you can definitely relate to a rapeseed field and a blue sky, that's for sure. If you want to learn more about how I compose my photos, such as keeping them simple, whether to choose a vertical or horizontal framing, or how to use the concept of geometry to influence the viewer's perception of your photo, be sure to get my two ebooks on composition and landscape photography. They're easy to read with minimal text and loads of photos to exemplify my points. There's a link in the description of this video to both the full versions and free light versions if you want to check them out before buying. So I actually managed to find one single wind turbine just standing there on a field or behind the field. 
of all this rapeseed here. Now the sun is up here, so about 90 degrees, which means that the polarizing filter actually works really great for the scene. I have my composition right here, super simple, straight in the middle, central composition, F8, ISO 200, gives me a shutter speed of 1 320th of a second. The reason why I still have ISO 200 is that when I put the polarizing filter in front, it does cut out some of the light. So you can see here how big of a difference it makes. So when I put it in here, and you can see when I put the polarizing filter in front, it actually makes quite a significant difference. The only thing I do not like is that line just underneath here. And I'm pretty sure I'm just going to clone that one out in Photoshop because it's really not adding anything to the photo. I just want it completely clean. We are making wind turbine art here. <laughs> So another thing that is very, very Danish is all these many small churches we have laying around out in the countryside. Usually they are either inside a small town or they are just outside. Finding churches that you can isolate in the landscape is a little bit hard. There's not a whole lot of them. I think I have been driving around quite a lot in the Danish countryside and trying to find some. And I scouted this one uh, this winter and I was like, hmm, there may be some kind of wheat field or rapeseed field in front of it. And luckily there is. Sadly, the nearest field is not rapeseed. So I will have, I've had to go a little bit back. You can see the road here, but uh, I simply just go a little bit in to the field as you can see here. And by putting the camera in here, I'm actually able to isolate the church and have that beautiful yellow blanket of flowers underneath it. Now this specific church is actually the second church that I'm photographing like this. I came by one earlier that I didn't film because I knew there was a pretty decent chance that I would find some other church. So uh, here is this one photo from, from here and uh, then also from the other church. So what better than to end the day at one of the many, many Danish lighthouses. After all, I am pursuing something Danish. So since we have so many of them, I have come to Bobia, which is a lighthouse that I visited a couple of years ago, one and a half years ago. And I got some absolutely stunning photos back then. Even with the flowers here in front, I am not sure I will get something better, but I will most definitely get something different. The clouds are gorgeous up here, very feathery-ish. And hopefully the light will be a little bit more than it is right now, so I will get some more colors up. The composition is fairly simple, straight on central composition, because I am photographing a tower and uh, if I just turn down the exposure here, you can see I have a fairly nice composition with, with the clouds up here. So all should be good. Aperture priority ISO 100. And 
an aperture of eight gives me a quarter of a second shutter speed. There's almost no wind, so all should be good. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful evening. Over the next couple of days I had a few more outings where I first found this little location with this beautiful twin tree. I had to remove a tree to the left to clean up the scene. I think this photo fits in well with this little collection. The following day some nice moody clouds had moved in and I got this photo. The birds are actually the same bird I caught in six different photos and mixed into this one with the same darkened blending mode in Photoshop that I mentioned earlier. I know not all people enjoy this kind of editing, but for me it's completely fair game as my photos are more of impressions from an outing and the skies were full of rooks flying around in the relatively high winds. If you want to learn all these kind of editing techniques, be sure to enroll in my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers course. There is a coupon code in the description of this video, which you can use to save a bit of money. Be sure to check out this, the ebooks on composition, and subscribe to my newsletter for all sorts of announcements, such as workshops. If you have already subscribed to the newsletter, but don't receive them, be sure to check your spam or promotional folders. As always, I'd highly appreciate both a like and a comment. Let me know your thoughts on summer photography, and thanks for watching.